COVID vaccines are being made and distributed across the world. Each vaccine needs a vial, a syringe, packaging, and a needle, a bunch of little pieces to get the medicine to consumers. And you'd be shocked to find out that one of the biggest producers of these little pieces is a family-run company called the Stevanato Group, founded outside of Venice in 1949. They started out making bottles for wine and perfume. In the 1960s, they were a company that was really focused on, uh, you know, producing for the food industry, um, winemakers, and that's sort of a business that was not really working out for them anymore as those switch more to plastic. They were trying to figure out a way to sort of move away from the, the food industry and, and try to find a way to make glass products for the pharmaceutical industry, which was growing very rapidly in Italy at the time. You had a lot of, um, again, family-owned companies and other uh, companies which were growing in that market. And they needed to find a way to make it, make these bottles, these vials faster uh, than their competitors. And that's sort of the innovation of that, of that machine called the 3BS machine, named after the four inventors, Bostaro, Bormioli, and Bardelli, as well as Stefanato, that really sort of helped differentiate them, especially against some of their competitors in Germany and elsewhere in Italy. With those machines, they could produce 50 to 60 percent more than their competitors. And they sort of reinvested all their profits into that. If that had failed, uh, you know, the company might not have survived where it is today. But it sort of helped them gain a foothold in a new industry, uh, which kept growing. And they moved away from providing those glass bottles for wine and perfume and moved entirely into this. They actually shut down the glass bottle, the wine bottle company at that time as well. I think really uh, set the stage for them to grow up till the 90s. In the 2000s, expanded overseas. So as of 2020, uh, Steven Auto was making more than 2 billion uh, glass vials a year, more than 600 million syringes and more than 4 billion plastic parts, um, including for diagnostic tests. So that's sort of the their main uh, efforts sort of related to COVID. They also, as I mentioned earlier, are the largest producer of insulin pen cartridges, which is a another big uh, market. In 2019, the global pharmaceutical industry purchased some 12 billion vials. The Steven Auto Group provided more than 2 billion of those. I might come off as a little nerdy, but one thing I, I find interesting and that I, you know, w was really drawn to while reporting the story is how they don't just make the vials or just the syringes. They make the machines that make those vials, that turn the glass into those vials, that sterilize them, that and then, uh, you know, can package them at the end of at the end of the process. So they're really involved at every single step of the way, uh, which I think is hard to think about. You don't really think about companies making all those things together. The Steven Auto Group is doing well and is still family owned. They recorded about $70 million in net profit and $670 million in sales in 2019. In terms of ownership, Sergio Stevanato, who is the son of the founder Giovanni and the uh, chairman of the board emeritus, owns a 68% stake. He stepped down as CEO quite some time ago when he handed over the reins to his son Franco. Uh, Franco recently stepped down as CEO to become chairman of the board. He and his brother Marco who is vice chairman, owned the remaining 32% of the company. We estimate Sergio's 68% stake to be worth $1.8 billion, with the stakes owned by Marco and Franco to be uh, north of $400 million apiece. Seven Auto Group is planning to go public, I think, sometimes in, sometime in the next three years. They have some of their banks and investors trying to push them to go public earlier, especially because of all the publicity they're getting uh, from their efforts in COVID, but I think they want to sort of take their time. So I think it'll be interesting to see how they expand their footprint there uh, and try to collaborate with biotech companies before they get a product to market. And, um, you know, a good thing about, an interesting thing about their business, which is good for them, is that when they make packaging for, you know, be it a drug or a vaccine or anything, um, that's obviously patented, right? But often, even after the patent expires, uh, drug producers tend to use the same packaging because it's easier. So they're making money for a long time, you know, the whole uh, lifetime of that pattern and then even afterwards. So obviously going public is going to change things um, from being a family owned private company um, that's been pretty closely run and held for such a long time. It'll be interesting to see how they navigate that and how they grow in the U.S. and India and, and elsewhere.